Hello, I'm Pastor Roger, pastor of Victory Center Church, and you are watching Living in Victory. Today, we're going to be talking about something that, for some reason, is super controversial in a lot of churches and with a lot of believers, and it is prosperity. And I want to start out by saying prosperity isn't selfish. In fact, that's the name of the program, Prosperity Isn't Selfish. What a coincidence. So here we go. Uh, 3 John 1, 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in good health just as your soul prospers. You know, it's really interesting because that is really God's will is for us to be uh, prosperous in all things and, and, and be in good health. You know, Jesus came in John 10, 10 to give us a, a life and life abundant. You know, he made that clear. Uh, you know, the thief only comes to uh, steal, kill, destroy, but Jesus came so we can have an abundant life. And when he's talking about that in that verse, he's really talking about a present tense reality, not the life that we have after we die. He's talking about the current life, the, the Zoe life, the Z-O-E, if you look it up in your Strong's Concordance or however you want to do your research. It's a present tense uh, type of life we can only have when we're in union with Christ, in union with God. And it is a, a life of overflowing. He said he's going he's gonna to fill us to overflowing. Now, we're going to dig into some scriptures here in Matthew chapter 6. Um, and again, the reason why we're addressing this, I just want to say, clarify, the reason why we're addressing this is because for some reason, uh, prosperity, and I'll tell you what I believe the reason is, prosperity, you know, the, 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 this prosperity, talking about prosperity inside of a church or, or a, with a believer can be controversial because the doctrine uh, of man, Mark 7, 13, that Jesus warned us about that has made God's word no effect. The enemy, the, the devil, has infiltrated a lot of our thinking, a lot of our doctrine in the church to disempower what the church can do, what the real purpose of the church, to disempower believers. You know, we see that with a lot of, uh, a lot of the things that Jesus said we were going to do. John 14, 12, he said, you're going to do the same works and greater works. But, unfortunately, many, a large portion of the church has adopted a, a doctrine that says, oh no, that's not really for today. Well, Jesus said, if you believe in me, you're going to do the same works and even greater works. So now, when it comes to prosperity, we see like, you know, a lot of churches are preaching a message, oh, poverty is, is godly, you know, uh, God, God doesn't want you, to be, but wants you to prosper and be in good health, he, he wants you to be poor and sick. And that's really super weird. And to believe that disempowers your ability to receive God's best in your life. So one of the reasons why God wants you to receive his best, and it, which includes good health and prosperity, is because he, he needs to be able to bless you so you can be a blessing to others. It's hard to bless anyone when you're not even uh, being blessed yourself. And God wants you to be a blessing to others. He can't get it through you if he can't get it to you. And, and, and the enemy knows that. If he can keep God's people sick and broke, he can keep them from accomplishing their purpose on this, on this world and, and seeing the gospel of the kingdom preached and, and demonstrated with power everywhere. You know, Jesus wants us to bring, you know, he said, let, uh, Father, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. And that's what our assignment is. We, Jesus has, has already gotten us in heaven. Colossians 3, read that. Now our responsibility is to bring the, the, the kingdom of heaven, the, the will of God, to this earth. And his will is for us to be in good health and to, and to be made whole and for us to prosper in every way. That doesn't just mean finances, but it also includes your finances. You know, God has things set aside for you to do that he can't have you do and if you're broke. It's just... It's really uh, common sense, but for some reason, when we get uh, the man-made religion infiltrates our thinking, it removes our ability, or not our ability, but it, it, it stops, it stunts our common sense. It stunts our ability to receive the reality of God's word, which is exactly what Jesus warned us about in Mark 7, 13. Don't let the teachings of man make God's word no effect. Well, let's see, I, believe, I want you to prosper in all things and be in good health. Well, that certainly doesn't mean he wants us to prosper and be in good health. No, actually it does. John 10, 10, I, I've come to give you life and life abundant. Uh, God just didn't come to give me life and life. Uh, I'm supposed to have a life and life mediocre, life and life of poverty, life and life of sickness. Sickness and poverty do not line up with the abundance of God's word and the abundance of God's promises. So 2 Peter 1, 3 says that everything you need for life and godliness, 
everything is yours. Ephesians 1, 3 says, you've been blessed with every blessing heaven has to offer. But when we refuse to receive God's best, we won't receive it. And now I, I want to challenge your thinking. I want to challenge you to, to stay tuned and watch and go through these scriptures with me. And we're going to see what God's word really says about prosperity and the purpose of prosperity. I've already I really let the cat out of the bag. He needs to bless you so he can bless others through you. He can't get it through you if he can't get it to you. So take off the blinders, take, out, take, take the stinking thinking out of the way that's kept you, that's held you back from God's best in your life. So, you, so you, the things that have held you back from, from moving forward in God's higher purpose, higher calling for you. Remember, Adam had an assignment in the garden before the, before the fall of man, be, before sin came in. Adam's assignment, Adam and Eve were supposed to uh, multiply take dominion, take care of the garden, advance the kingdom of heaven, not just in the Garden of Eden, but around the world, okay? When he fell, and you can see this in, in, in Genesis, you go back there and, and read through this, when, you see, when he fell, he went from uh, being provided for by the blessing of the Lord to the curse came, the blessing departed, and all of a sudden Adam is responsible for his own provision, and so now it's by the sweat of his brow he has to labor to feed himself and to feed his family and to take care of himself. Be prior to that, prior to the curse, Adam was taken care of by the blessing of the Lord, by the, by, the, by, the, by the power of God in his life so that he was free to operate in his assignment, which was be fruitful, multiply, take dominion, advance the kingdom. But when, when this curse came, the blessing departed, and all of a sudden he's responsible to take care of himself and his own provision. Well, guess what? Jesus was made a curse for you if you've if you received your salvation, if you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And scripture is super simple. It says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Then if you've done that, you got born again. If you've never done that, guess what? You can do it right now. You can enter the kingdom of heaven, be a child of God, and 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 it's amazing. Jesus already forgave your sins 2,000 years ago. All, you, all that's up to you is to receive what's already been done, the grace of God that's already set aside for you. Receive it by faith. If you've never done that, all you have to do is repeat after me right now. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you went to the cross, died in my place, died for my sins, rose again on the third day. I'll give you some time. I believe God raised you from the dead on the third day. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I receive my salvation now. Thank you, Jesus. If you've just done that, or if you've ever done that, you're born again. You're a child of God. But here's the thing to know. When Jesus went to that cross and when he rose from that tomb, when he, when he was whipped, when he was, you know, we're, about, we're, we're right now as I'm taping this, we're entering the Easter season. We're about a week away. Part of the atonement is not just the forgiveness of sins, but it's Jesus taking, it says, by his stripes you're healed. He took your shame. He took your sickness. He took your disease. He took, he took sin and the consequences thereof upon him. Part of the curse of sin is the poverty. And Jesus became, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, do you not know that Jesus became poor so you could prosper? That's a reality. It's part of the atonement. Jesus became poor so you wouldn't have to be. Why does he want to prosper you? Because he needs to get it to you so he can get it through you. You're meant to be a blessing. God wants to, it, the scripture it says he wants to bless you so he can establish his covenant with the earth. Praise God. Hey, let's just jump into the scriptures here. Oh, so when Jesus came, I just wanted to clear, finish up that thought. When Jesus came, he became a curse for you so you could receive the blessing. Read Galatians chapter 3. It's, it's, this is like black and white. This is basic new covenant but structure, how, how, what Jesus came to do. So when the blessing came, the curse departed. When you got born again, the curse, had to, the curse has to depart off your life because you received the blessing of the Lord when you got born again. So now you're blessed. The blessing of Abraham has come upon you. Jesus, the second Adam, has restored to us what the first Adam gave gave up. Well, now you don't labor by the sweat of your brow to earn a living. I'm, I'm going to say, yes, did Adam work before the curse came? Absolutely. But guess what? Your job, your career now, it's not your, it's not your job. It's not your source of income. It's now your assignment. God's going to, God's going to use that as your assignment. 
to advance the kingdom. He has become your source. God's become your source. He's become your source of all things. And, and if you allow him to be, he'll become your source of, of, of material things. He'll become your, your source of, of wholeness. He'll become your source of prosperity. And when you, when you, allow, when you allow that, the reality of the, the kingdom of heaven and the scriptures I'm going to share with you to come to pass, Man, your job is not, is not where you labor. Your job is where you advance the kingdom. You're working for God 24-7. All believers are called into full-time ministry, God. Praise God. All, if you put your trust in Him, you are. Praise God. Anyway, all right, Matthew 6, verse, uh, we'll start in, I'm just going to, uh, let's start right here. Verse 24, I'll read this. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate one or love the other. He'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. So Jesus is saying, we're, he understands, God is so smart, he understands, like the deity mammon is a deification of wealth, okay? When, when, we, when, when we begin to serve God and, and come off the earth system, Colossians 1, 13, so we've been transferred from the domain of darkness to kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. When we get transferred to the kingdom of light, God does not, does not want you to continue to be serving the deification of wealth. The, 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 he does not want you to continue to serve money, okay? He expects you to serve him full time. But to do that, you have to put your trust in him for your resources. This is super simple, but it's a real big hang up for all. And, and I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience. This can be a really big hang up. You know, can I, could, I ha could I heal people? Could I lay hands on the sick and heal them without without God in my life, without believing in Jesus Christ, without believing that I've been commissioned to heal the sick by Jesus. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't have the power. I, I, any, I'm smart enough to figure that out. Could I go get a job and make money? Absolutely. For me, believing God for, for material things, believing God for my prosper provision was like, huh, this doesn't make any sense. Not only had I been taught that uh, money was evil, but I, had, but I knew how to make money without God's help. So it was really, this was one of the ch most challenging things for me. But praise God, even I can get it. That means you can get it too. Praise God, and, and you're gonna begin to prosper according to God's word, according to his promises, and you're gonna move fa farther and faster than you can imagine, seeing God's blessing and seeing his kingdom manifest and seeing the kingdom impact, seeing how the lives he's gonna impact through you. All right. So Jesus goes on and says in Matthew chapter 6, he's saying, hey, you can't, you, you're, you know, you, why are you worried about this stuff? Your clothes, your food, all these things, are, you know, and he, he goes on and on and on. And then he says, don't even the, the, the non-believers, don't they think the same way? And he says, oh, you know, you of little faith, let's jump down to verse 30. He says, you of little faith, he's, he's talking about, it. he's saying you of little faith, do not worry, in verse 31, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? Uh, even the non-believers seek these things, for your heavenly Father knows what you need, he knows you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. This is amazing. When you come into the kingdom of God, when you got born again, it includes all your needs. That this is, a, this is a real hardcore principle of the kingdom of heaven. It includes all your needs. You, don't got, you didn't get born again. Now you're part of the family of God. Oh, but 40 hours a week, you're going to have to go over into the world and serve the devil so you can get a paycheck and, and, and take care of yourself. No, that's not how it works. When, when you come into the kingdom, it says, all these things will be provided to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and your righteousness is in Christ. And when you, when you begin to understand that you are righteous, he has made you righteous, you are in right standing, you, he has made you holy and blameless before him. If, you know, if, if he finds you holy and blameless, scripture says, who can accuse you? Nobody can. Seek ye first a revelation of your righteousness, your right standing with God, which is what Jesus had a revelation of, his right standing with the Father, and he wants you to have the same thing. Seek ye first the kingdom, advancing the kingdom as on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. All the things you need are provided in that. Wow, this is a major revelation. You don't have to, you don't have to be transferred to the kingdom of light, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and go back to the kingdom of darkness to get your paycheck, to get your basic needs met. That's a lie from the devil. It doesn't make any sense when you actually start to think about it. 
and you look at it from Jesus' perspective. That's why he's teaching this. Let's jump into 2 Corinthians um, chapter 8, verse 9. <clears throat> uh, praise the Lord. Since you excel in everything, in, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, See that you also excel in the grace of giving. <laughs> I just think this verse is funny. Hey, you guys have awesome faith. You're, you're excelling in the grace of everything. See to it that you also excel in giving. Again, we're talking about prosperity isn't selfish. Paul's writing this letter and he's saying, hey, the reason why God is prospering you is because he wants you to be a giver. Excel in the grace of giving. And, um, and he goes on to say, I am not commanding I am not commanding you, but I want you to test your sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. Paul is saying, hey. Jesus is the source of your wealth. Jesus is the source of your richness. Jesus is the source of your prosperity. Excel in the grace of giving. This is, he's your, he gave up everything. He gave, he's giving you the resources so you can be a giver. And then let's go into 2 Corinthians 9. I'm gonna, we're going to jump for it. But I, I really, read 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, we, were at, we had Bible study last night. We spent the whole, pretty much the whole time uh, studying these two chapters where they were the main thrust. Well, we, we did go through some other stuff, but the main thrust was on 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. And read them through in their completeness, and you're going to see like what he's talking about. He's talking about money. He's talking about resources. You know, in, in, I, want, I want you to see that 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 in the context because Paul is clearly talking about financial resources there. Clearly, clearly, clearly. Especially when you read it in context. Now, let's look at 2 Corinthians 9. And he's, again, he's focusing on provision. He's focusing on finances here. This is what he's talking about in these two chapters. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give as you have decided in your heart not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Look at verse 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Again, looking at this verse and understanding, and please take the time to look it up yourself and read it in context. Paul, again, is talking about f f financial things here. And he's saying God w w is able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times, having all that you need, all of your needs met. This is what he's talking about. He's saying all of your needs will be met. You're not going to have any lack, any insufficiency for anything. But it goes one step further. You will abound in every good work. You will abound. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, I have, I have all that I need. Well, great, that is an awesome first start. Now, are you abounding in every good work? Are you abounding in every good work? Because God wants not just to meet your needs because it isn't about you. It's about what God can get through you so he can bless not just you. You're going to get blessed in the blessing. That's, you just get blessed. That's how it works. But he wants to use you as a channel of his blessing. He wants you to, to use you as a storehouse of heaven. But to get, to get it through the storehouse, you've got to get it through the clearinghouse, which is your mind. You know? And if you're just thinking, well, I've got all I need, well, what, that's a great start. What about other people? This isn't about you. This is about, this is about God's love, not just for you, but for everybody. Now let's go into verse 9. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he, the, the verse 10 is just, if, if you let it, let's, let's just let this soak in. Now, he who supplies seed for the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. So we're talking about a store here, a store of seed, a, 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 a set aside amount of provision. Uh, we could call it a a lot of things, but 
He's not saying your needs are barely going to get met. He's saying you're going to have an excess of store on the side, and he's going to enlarge your harvest. Your harvest is what you're taking in right now. Your other harvest of righteousness, your harvest of right standing. Verse 11, <clears throat> you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now, this to me is a measure of prosperity. This to me, like when people, you know, uh, is this prosperity to me is verse 11. You will be rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. God wants to enrich you in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. You know, and then we can look, look back here and it says that he, he, is, he wants you to be able to uh, be generous and support everything he's putting on your heart to do. You know, verse 8, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, all of your needs are met, you have an excess so you can abound in every good work and you can be generous on every occasion. And as a result of your generosity, there's going to be thanksgiving to God. Wow, this is amazing. And again, he's, this is, read it in context, he's talking about finances here. God doesn't want you to be scraping by. He doesn't want you to be overcome by debt. He doesn't want you to be thinking, well, I've got enough for me. You know, Scripture says that, uh, in fact, uh, Proverbs 13, 22, I believe it is, says that a righteous man lays up, yeah, Proverbs 13, 22, he says that right, a righteous man lays up an inheritance for his children's children. And now we look at this store, we went back, he's, he's, he's enlarging your store of seed. Why is he enlarging your storehouse? Because if you're a righteous person, according to the word of God, you're laying up an inheritance for your children and your children's children. You're, you're setting aside a store, a, 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 an inheritance, and I also go, oh, that's just spiritual. Okay, all right, read it in context, please. Read it in context again. And I, I will say, everything in, the, everything in the physical realm starts in the spiritual realm. So is it spiritual? Absolutely. But that's not where it's meant to stay. Most of, your, most of our provision, most of our inheritance has yet to be manifest in the natural realm because we are just beginning to learn how to step into it by faith and receive the abundant provision that grace has provided for us so that we can prosper and be in good health as the Lord has declared over us so that we can be effective stewards, not just of, uh, not, not, not just of a little bit, but, a, but, of a, but of all things that he has entrusted to us. You know, we are, if we are his stewards here on this earth, we are supposed to be stewarding the resources and we're supposed to be not just, not just a little bit, but a lot of God's trusted us, with, trusted us with so much, but we're not going to be able to walk in the fullness of what he's entrusted to us until we begin to get a revelation of the grace that is on his word and, 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 and our faith that is already in us gets stirred up to receive that grace through faith. So he wants us to be generous on every occasion so that we can be a blessing to others. This again, prosperity isn't selfish. Can, can it be selfish? Sure, anything can be screwed up. Man, I could take this handy dandy water bottle that I'm keeping off the screen and I can use it to drink water out of or I could whip it at the camera and bust the lens. It's the same water bottle. It's how I use it that matters. Am I gonna use it to help myself or help somebody else here? You want me to drink a water? Or am I gonna use it for destruction? Am I gonna use it for evil, wickedness? That's the same thing with money. You know, except the thing with money is that you can begin to serve money instead of God. And the reality is this, and I really need you to, Holy Spirit is gonna give you revelation on this. Even if my words don't make sense, the Spirit of God is in you and He is gonna bring revelation. The reality is, <clears throat> when you don't believe God is the source of your prosperity and you, you're stepping out of the kingdom to receive money, you're, you have begun to serve mammon over here. Or not begun, but you're continuing to serve mammon like you did before you became a kingdom, became a child of God. God does not want you to serve him and mammon. That's what Jesus was talking about in the, where we started. 
when you begin to trust God, not just for your vision, but your, for your provision, because God's not going to give you vision without giving you the provision for it, and you stop serving mammon, he can get you the resources. Again, like I said in the beginning, your job is not, we, oh, I got to go to work. It's like, man, I get to go to my assignment today. And when you begin to trust him for your provision, he might change your assignment on you. You know, it does, he, he, then he's, he can start moving your assignment around he, or keep you in the same place. But allowing him to be your source of your provision allows him to be, your, to, to be the source of blessing in your life. Instead of you toiling by the sweat of your brow to feed yourself and to feed your family, to put your kids in school, to do all the things that you know God wants you to do, you begin to trust him to do all the things he wants you to do, it's amazing. I'm telling you from experience, it's amazing. You don't have to serve two masters anymore. You serve one master and his name is Jesus Christ. And he has come so you can have a life and life abundant and accomplish all the purposes that he, God has called you to. Do you really think God, Jesus Christ, went to the cross, rose from the dead to, to provide you? Second Corinthians 8, 9, he became poor so you could prosper. He did that for you already. Do you think it makes them happy when we say, oh no, Lord, I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna keep, I wanna keep doing it by the sweat of my brow because I know you don't want me to prosper. Please spend some time in his word, meditate on this stuff, pray. And when you can take your focus off of survival and put your focus onto the kingdom, you become so much more effective in your assignment. I'm telling you, you become so much more effective in your purpose here on earth. So praise God. What second, second uh, Corinthians 9, I'm just going to finish this up. I got about two minutes here and then we're going to be done. Praise the Lord. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is it also an overflowing expression of thanks to God? Wow. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, others will praise God for your obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Jesus Christ and your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And, the, and in their prayers for your, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Isn't that awesome? He's talking, about, he's talking about resources. He's talking about money. He's talking about finances. God knows, that, God knows, how, this, God knows how this system works. That's why he created a whole other system called the kingdom of heaven. And he has so much blessing, so much favor for you, so much grace for you. And we are waking up to a new reality of God's abundant, overflowing love, his abundant, overflowing joy, his abundant, overflowing grace, his abundant, overflowing provision. Our faith is becoming stirred up like never before, and it's not going to settle back down. We will finish the race. We will finish the race strong. We will finish the race, and we will bring glory to God. And we are not going to stop until we're done. We can't be stopped and we won't quit, okay? Remember that. You cannot be stopped and you will not quit in Jesus' name. Hey, until next time, keep living in victory. Be blessed. God loves you. I love you. And we hope to see you real soon.